So in this specific case, we have five full bags just for the static side. Bunch of tagline, bunch of anchor material, and yeah, basically everything we need. Let's get it done. What's going on, guys? I am back on my two feet, severely stoked. And today, I'm gonna to be showing you guys how I work the static side on ridiculously big lines. Ridiculously big lines, there we go. So today, we have a new Sequoia record, tagged, ready to haul. Yeah, we took about four hours this morning to get it tagged and up. And now, I'm gonna teach you guys how I haul this line across. Um, so, if that sounds interesting to you, meet me up at the anchor right now. So, um, whew, gotta get my breath. <laughs> I haven't highlighted in a while, guys. Means I haven't been hiking either. So I'm here with Jose. We're on the static side of our beautiful, beautiful line. You can see the tagline over yonder, over there. Um, and in order to even do this, you need a couple of things. The very first thing being, if you're using paracord or some really trashy tagline, you need to get rid of that right away. We're using six millimeter diamond braid rope. I'll post the link to where I got this down in the description. It is super cheap though. Uh, one regret, the six mil is really heavy. I think five mil would have been super good enough. So I'll post the link to both the six mil and the five mil, but I recommend the five mil. It's much lighter to carry around. Second piece of equipment you're gonna need, and it's also really important, is some sort of traction device. Here I have the Petzl Pro Traction. Uh, you could use the Petzl Micro Traction. You could use something else, but these the Petzl Traction devices, in my opinion, are the absolute best. You can see we've got it in here. They've got teeth holding you. Uh, you don't even have to worry about anything. Third piece of gear you're gonna need is a senders and some gloves because nobody wants to hold on to tagline with your bare hands. You're gonna, you're gonna go right through them. So once you have a senders, gloves, a traction device, and a good tagline, you're ready to tag big lines. That's all you need gear wise. Now logistics wise, this is also very important. You need a nice ledge to haul on. So if you notice here, our traction device is here. However, we've got, and I'm just gonna walk up along it, we've got about 10 meters of space before our cliff just drops out right here, right below us. So we have all 10 meters here to work safely if we're tied in, of course. And that's really important. You don't wanna be, uh, you don't wanna be right on a cliff edge with your micro traction device hanging right off the cliff because then really only one person could work on it and it's just annoying. So that is the second thing you need. This isn't even equipment. This is just a logistics thing. So uh, if let's, let's make a crazy scenario here. Whoa, Ugh. almost fell. Let's assume we're gonna use this block as our anchor right here for whatever reason. You see, this is right by the edge. Even if I had this guy all wrapped, ready to anchor, I wouldn't haul off of that. I would look further up here for another anchor that I could build so that I could set up a haul anchor. And that's exactly what we did here. You could tell here, this is not a solid anchor. This is, Jose, can you lay it, lean against this rock to show how big it is? It's not very big, but for hauling and for an untension highline, it's super good enough and we're just gonna use it to haul. We're not gonna actually highline off this block. The reason, like I said, the reason we're using this block is because it's far back from our anchor point and it's gonna give us ample space to work. So a good workspace, that's the second thing you need. Now, let's get started. Okay, all right, all right, all right. So it's getting sunny, it's getting kind of hot, it's okay. I wanted to elaborate on what I meant by having an anchor further back than the anchor you're actually using. If you look here, where the haul system is set up, we have the pro tracks anchored to a dynamic rope. I know, not static, but whatever. That's what we had, so we're using it. Our actual anchor is gonna be way over here. So I'm holding the master point here and it's gonna go over here, right off the edge here. We're not hauling off this because there's no space to work. You want space to work, 
it makes it much easier. I take two. <laughs> All right, so we're finally starting to pull. Um, so Jose is passed into the anchor right here, and he's got his ascender on the rope coming. And this rope, you know, follow it, goes all the way back here to this guy. So Jose's gonna start pulling. Go ahead, Jose. And I'm just gonna pull his slack through. And you see that? Really nice and efficient. You don't want it to be jerky, just really nice. We're gonna pull like this on a one to one to one to one until we literally can't anymore. And then we're gonna figure something else out. I'm not too sure if we're gonna even need more, but for demonstration purposes, if we get close to the end and we're still doing fine, I'm gonna do a three to one, a five to one, and then actually before all that happens, we're gonna hit a knot in the middle of this tagline, and I'm gonna show you how I efficiently jump knots. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so we've now hauled 200 meters, as you saw in our ridiculous time lapse, um, and we just hit a knot. So I'm gonna show you guys how I pass the knot. Um, you can notice here, one very important thing that you wanna make sure is that there's space. You don't wanna jam the knot up in your device. That's uh, something you really wanna avoid, actually, because then it'll be much harder to get it off. Uh, we actually got it really close. We should maybe have had our knot like right here and this would be a lot easier But that is what we have to work with. So I'm gonna hand this camera off to Jose so I can set up the system So what you will need you'll need an ascender of sorts um, Something to release something that is releasable under tension I am going to be using a Grigri because I have one, but if you really don't have something like this, you can use your damn top release. Anything that can release under tension. So I'm gonna put this to our hauling point here. As you see right there. Now here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this ascender and just going to tie a knot in it here. Just an overhand will do. But really anything works. That is an ugly knot. I apologize, world. There we go. And we have a cap in there. I'm just going to clip it to my ascender. This rope that I'm using here is a free end. It's bundled up right over there. This is a free end. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put this rope or this ascender rather on this tight strand and I'm gonna just put it up a little bit. Um, you don't want to go too far if your ledge isn't that big. You want to make sure you can reach it because you're gonna you're gonna let it go out a little bit. Then I'm gonna put this in the gree gree. Make sure you loaded your gree gree the right way. Be surprised. So we're gonna put that back on. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just take this really tight. So now the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull this and I'm gonna actually, it's really tight, so I'm gonna. Okay, so a little bit more. Actually, that's good. So you'll notice now that all the tension is on this ascender and there's none on the pro tracks right here. Now, this part is still a little bit scary to me. You wanna make sure that your ascender's on well and that it's not gonna come undone because you've got your entire line on this ascender. Now what that allows me to do is take the, take this guy out and I'm gonna do that. So, and this is the pro track so I can just open it right up. Just like that. Now another tip here tie your tails kind of long so you just have a good amount. This might be kind of tough actually because these were tight. 
But you gotta cut me some slack. I've got like three fingers. <laughs> I shouldn't even be tying knots. <laughs> and in case you're wondering, I like to use the Euro death knot to tie my ropes together. It, um, it makes the rope roll really nicely over edges of any sort. So there we go. Now the end is loose. Old rope that we just finished passing through is right here. End is here. New rope is here. Reason why you want semi-long tails is so that you can then go ahead and put it through here without any hassle. So we're gonna install that, make sure the teeth are down, and then we're gonna pull a little bit just to make sure these teeth engage. So I'll just pull this a little bit. There we go. And now, you don't, I didn't really even need to do this, but I can slide this forward on the gree gree, take my ascender off, and we are back on the pro tracks. Easy as that. So that's how you pass a knot through a pro tracks, or that's how I like to do it at least. Okay, so when I get back to pulling, I hope that was helpful. If you have other ways of doing this that are more interesting than this, please drop that down in the comments below. I'm always willing to learn something new, but this is how I've done this since I started doing this. So it's worked really well and I haven't had any issues. But yeah, we're gonna get back to work now. So we just got it on the soft release. Didn't have to use the three to one thing for that guy right there. He's awesome. We just met him and he helped us. <laughs> but now we have to use the three to one to get it off our tagline and onto our anchor. So here's the secret here, if you want to bring the camera closer. Um, so one thing I had been experimenting with was clipping the soft release onto the line before it got sent across. And then that way it was really easy to take it off. However, soft releases usually have two pieces of steel and for long lines like this, that really adds up. So I no longer clip the soft release to the line before rigging. I keep it on the static side and we just clip it into the, into the vein stone loop. It's not a very tough thing to do. We still have it on our tagline and swivel. By the way, make sure you're using a swivel for big lines. Crucial, crucial, or you'll get a ton of twists on your way over. Now I'm gonna show you how to do the five to one or the three to one if we're strong enough, just so we could get tension off this tagline and onto our anchor. So it's very similar to any pulley system that you've ever used as a slack liner. I'm going to take an ascender, such as this one right here. And we're going to clip it here. On the, on the one with load. Next thing we're going to do is grab a few pulleys. If you want to do a three to one, you only need one pulley. If you want to do a five to one, you only need, you need three. We're going to try three to one first, see if that works. Clip it to this ascender. And then, so we walk back here. The rope coming out of the pro tracks here. Off. So this rope coming out of the pro tracks, we're gonna go back here and get it on this pulley. So now we've got a three to one. If we wanted to do anything more than a three to one, we would simply put a pulley on this anchor here or right here even. And you know what? I'm gonna do a five to one just to show how useful it is. So two more pulleys. And this is why the, uh, the Pro Trax is really cool. It's got a hole so you can directly put a pulley on it. Of course, got to feed the rope through it first. So, let's get that. We clip this to the small rigging plate capability that the Pro Trax has. And then we have another strand if we want to use it. I am going to use it. And I'm just gonna clip that one to the handle right here of the ascender. This hole's a bit small, so I'll take this, wrap the rope through it, and then we're gonna put that through the handle. 
lock that up. And now we've got a five to one system just on here. So we're gonna try it out, see if it works, see if I can do this by myself. And then if not, we'll put the camera down and get Jose to help me. So here we go. Left-handed by myself. So I'm just gonna walk this back and then I'm gonna let that clip back in. Give me, gotta reset, cause if this ascender jams into this pulley, you are screwed. <laughs> so we're gonna go back again and do that one more time. And I'm doing this by myself. 540 meter line rigged. I'm pulling it by myself here. So again, we're gonna give it a nice pull. Release our protraction teeth. And then just walk it forward a little bit. And, and oh, range finder. Watch yourself. Yep. Walkie. Want to die. So the anchor shifting. Okay. Jose, can you reinstall the teeth? Here, hold this. I think it's gonna shift too much. You're good. Reinstall the teeth, push the button. Just push the button. Just push it. There you go. Okay, so I'm letting this go. Alright, and now Back hold this. Alright. Fine. Okay, so now the anchor's fixed. It's not gonna scoot over there anymore. It's on this nice anchor here. And we're gonna keep doing what I just did to release it some more. So we go back yet again. A sender on here. Pull. And voila, tension is off the tagline and on our anchor. Thank you everybody. If that was helpful, you know what to do. I'm not even gonna say it. Hit those buttons down below. Follow, subscribe. We're gonna be rigging a lot more big lines like this, but for now, I'm gonna go watch this thing. Greg, tension! <laughs>